Hello my dear friends greetings to you in Jesus precious name Can I take a moment to welcome each and every one of you from wherever you are tuned in let us know which city which nation you are listening from I really salute your desire to come week after week on this platform to receive from God's voice I believe that your sacrifices is definitely going to bring down the fire of god upon every area of your life see it cannot be that we can come time and again into the presence of god and we encounter his word we experience a touch from his hand we see his face and then we go back without being transformed it cannot be that a uh, experience with god's word doesn't transform us and any transformation that happens on the inside of us eventually will begin to flow from each and every area of our lives it will reflect in your finances it will eventually begin to reflect in your relationships it will reflect in your habits in your attitude in your conversations everything flows from the inside out and i believe that we are here one more time to have an experience with the person of god with the presence of god this is our year to be rooted my dear family this is our year where we get transformed by seeing and experiencing his glory his presence in a fresh new manner I truly believe that each and every one of you were blessed last weekend when our prophet brought the word to us from a high place. I do believe that there was a special anointing upon that word that is going to take us to that high place as well. I believe and one of the things that I've been praying for myself is that my posture and my stature will begin to look the same. Sometimes we don't understand that my posture has to match our stature that in the spirit who I am has to match how I live my life how I pursue God on a daily basis I pray that in this season once we find that location once we understand where God meets us or where God wants to meet us that we will remain rooted there and we will remain dedicated to that one location till he shows up till he comes till he reveals himself till he gives us another encounter and let me tell you this also do not be satisfied with one experience we have to crave for more we have to keep coming back to god for so much more you know when the uh when the woman when they were at the uh you know tomb where jesus was kept for the last 3 days they did have an experience when the angels came they did have a supernatural experience they could have just been happy with that one experience and just gone back and the truth is that some of them actually did go back after that experience it was only mary who stayed back who stayed put for more for a greater encounter for a revelation of the face of Jesus and it was to marry to that firm consistent passionate Jesus lover that that face was revealed my hope is that you and i will be counted in that blessed generation of people that are going to be a uh, a uh, passionate follower of Jesus a passionate lover of Jesus we will be that nevertheless generation we will be the people that will not give up pursuing after his voice and his presence in this season wow what a journey we have had it's only about 4 months into this year i know that every nation has its own challenges either with the government or with the people or with the pandemic systems and everything i pray that in this season we will see 
supernatural breakthrough and victory. We are praying that each and every one of you will remain immune to whatever the enemy is trying to throw at you, whether it be a financial hurdle, whether it be a emotional battle or a physical battle. No, you will be immune because there is a grace that is covering you in this season that you have no idea how powerful that grace is, how great that grace is. And I believe that because you are under this grace, because you are under this voice, you are going to be protected and you are going to be covered. You know, when our father went on his knees to pray for us last weekend, I just knew there was a sudden supernatural confidence that came into my spirit. Uh, that confidence was so strong that I felt like even if I don't pray, I will succeed. I will pray so that I can grow closer to Jesus. But the blessing on our lives is such that even if we are, uh, you know, in the wrong at multiple times, we will still be blessed. That is the price that our Father has paid and that is how much we've been covered in this season. So it is with great joy, such a privilege it is for you and I to be under this covering. So let me remind you one more time, you are immune, you are already blessed, you're already covered, you are already prayed for, you are already being battled for, so you don't have to fight your own battles. Now you can be the one who will fight for others, pray for others and believe God for other people's breakthroughs and victories. You are already covered. You know, as we've been studying the book of Revelation, one thing's become more and more clearer that in the last days, things are going to be a lot more tricky. There is going to be a lot of deception. There is going to be a lot of battles. There's going to be a lot of lying and cheating. And there's going to be a lot of people that is going to try to sell fake peace. And I believe that in the world around us, there are many that are still, that are right now trying to sell fake and counterfeit peace. And we have to be aware of this and we have to be consciously discerning and praying against any false sense of security because God is our ultimate security not a Watson not a government program I mean praise God for everything good that's going on around us but uh, God is our ultimate security our strength does not come from human help our strength comes from the fact that we trust in the name that is above every other name. And that name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous will run to that name and there they will be safe. There they will be covered. There they will be protected. Amen. Uh, so let's continue the study a little more further. I hope you remember where we stopped last week. This was the book of Revelation chapter 21 and verse 8 where we stopped last week. And we read the categories of people that will be thrown into the lake of burning sulfur. And we understood that this is called the second death. Let's continue with verse 9. By the way, if you have missed any of the teachings, you can go back on YouTube, go look up the playlists. And you can find all the other teachings of the book of Revelation. And you will be able to understand if we miss out on something in this, you will be able to go back and catch up on those from the previous teachings. Let's read verse 9 together. Then one of the seven angels who held the seven bowls containing the seven last plagues came and said to me, Come with me, and I will show you the bride, the wife of the Lamb. Beautiful. You remember that this is one of the angels that were pouring out a bowl of plague upon the whole earth. Now there were seven angels. This is one of the seven angels 
who is now telling Apostle John, saying, you've seen what will happen to the physical earth. You've seen how the thousand year period is going to be. You've seen how God the Father, he's going to make all things new. You've seen how he is going to wipe out every tear and how he is going to completely remove death and grave from this new order, from this new world, from this new heaven and earth. And now let me show you something even more precious. I would like to show you the bride. Now she's no longer just the bride. Now she is the wife of the lamb. I don't think there's any other place where I have read where the church is referred to as the wife of the lamb. There are several places where you would see the bride of Christ mentioned, but this is one of the only places where I have found where it says the wife of the lamb, not just the bride. Now she is the wife of the lamb because she's been with Jesus for the last thousand years and she has ruled and reigned with Jesus. There is so much of oneness between her and Jesus. Now she represents the image of Jesus in such a glorious fashion that now she is no longer just the bride. She is also the wife of the Lamb. I pray and I hope that in this season, when we spend time with God, we will receive characteristics of God. We will be so full of God that anybody that sees us will not just see us as a distant representative of the kingdom of God, but will actually see us as a, a, a person that carries that God, who can see us and say, hey, this person truly is the wife of the Lamb. Now, in the Spirit, it says, verse 10, so he took me in the Spirit, Okay, now, where he is, is already a very high place in the spirit realm. That's how he is able to see all these things that is going to happen thousands of years later upon the earth. And now he's taking him to a higher place. So it says, so he took me in the spirit to a great high mountain. See, even when we are in the spirit, we can access different levels. You know, Paul said it like this. He said, I know a man who once went to the third heavens. He was actually talking about himself. And so there are different heavens, different levels, even in the spirit realm. And you will be able to see things in one realm, one level that you don't have access to in the other levels or the other realms. So in the spirit now he's taking him to a higher level, a higher mountain. And he showed me the holy city, Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God. This is beautiful because you remember the Bible says in the previous verse that John was being shown the bride of Jesus or the wife of Jesus. And when John actually reaches the place, what he sees is a city. It says he saw the holy city, the precious city of Jerusalem descending out of heaven from God. So this is amazing. This is a church that comes out of God, that comes from God, because we are already in, in God. We are hidden in God. See, the Bible tells us in multiple times that if we are in Christ and because Jesus is in the Father, we are also in the Father. And so when John sees the church, he sees this church coming from God, coming from the Father, and he sees the church as a beautiful city, as a city called as the holy city, the city of Jerusalem. I want you to remember something that our father taught us last year during the lockdown season where he was talking about how you and I, we are the light of the world 
and how you and I, we are a city on a hill. We are a city and how you and I will be the light like a city on a hill. It shines out. You and I, we can have the organ organization and the structure of a city. When God becomes the center of our lives, there is going to be so much organization. There is going to be so much structure. And that's what the Apostle John saw in the church. Now, you would expect this church to look like a lady, a very calm person. And yet, when John saw this this church, John saw the church in the shape of a city. Now, you should understand everything that we see here, it is symbolic. I'm not saying that there can be no literal representation of it, but I want you to understand what God is trying to speak to the church. You remember at the beginning of the book of Revelation, it says, let he who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches, what the Spirit is speaking, what the Spirit is revealing to the churches. So we are not trying to find how heaven will look like or how this uh, uh, new Jerusalem will be like. We are trying to understand what is it that the Holy Spirit is speaking to the church. He's telling us to be prepared to be a city, to be strong in our organization, to be strong in the way that we are well knit with each other. Let me read on. It says in the next verse, uh, verse 11, This city of Jerusalem is shown with the glory of God. Wow. So when John sees the first characteristic that he sees about the city, before this he did mention that this was a holy city. And now he says, this city is shown with the glory of God. It shone with the glory of God because it came out of God, because it came from God, because it was coming down from God. It shone with the glory of God. So I believe that the church is called to shine with the glory of God. We are not supposed to be hidden. We are supposed to shine. We are supposed to be the bright lights in this generation, in this season, especially during this darkness that is surrounding us. May we represent the light that we will eventually become. May we uh, have that heaven on earth experience. Let your will be done here on earth as it is in heaven. In heaven, his glory will shine on the church. So let it be here on earth. Lord, let your glory shine on the church like never before. Every church that is connected to us right now, from wherever they are connected, every Revived Nations church, every church that believes that this stream is going to feed them, is going to take them to the next level. Lord, we pray together as a family, let your glory shine upon each and every one of these churches. Let there be a special spotlight wherever they are placed and let the people that are hungry, that are thirsty, let them be drawn to these churches like how bees are attracted to the light like how bees are attracted to a flower with honey. Let the souls that are hungry and thirsty for an encounter with God, let them be drawn to these churches. Yes, the Bible says this city, it shone with the glory of God and it sparkled like a precious stone, like jasper, as clear as crystal. So we see the city is compared one to a light to a shining light and second to a sparkling precious stone something that can be it, something that is transparent it says it's clear it it was as precious as jasper and yet it was as clear as crystal it's transparent it is see through you know that's that's a great characteristic about the church 
that it has to be as precious as uh, as costly and at the same time it is as transparent and as accessible as crystal it's it goes on to say verse 12 the city wall was broad and high with 12 gates guarded by 12 angels and the names of the 12 tribes of Israel were written on the gates there were three gates on each side east north south and west verse 14 the wall of the city had 12 foundation stones and on them were written the names of the 12 apostles of the lamb this is very very important for us to understand and in fact also believe in see we think that okay when we get to heaven we're going to forget everything else and everybody else it'll all be about jesus right when we have a dream of how heaven is going to be like we think okay it's it's a place where we'll forget all of our men of god we'll forget all of our women of god we'll only be looking at jesus but see in the book of revelation when john sees a glimpse of the bride when he sees a glimpse of this wife of jesus he says there are two things that are very important there one is the gate and second is the foundation and it says the gates had the names of the 12 tribes of israel okay the foundations they had the names of the 12 apostles of jesus so what he's trying to say is there are only two types of people that will be found in this city or in this uh, church one will be those that are descendants of these 12 tribes of israel many of them they will be saved during the time of tribulation and even before and the second category of people are those that have been the the 12 disciples of jesus or their spiritual children uh down the line let me explain this a little bit better see from before you know the uh salvation was preached through jesus that is uh in the year ad 30 that is when jesus died and then he rose again and from then on salvation has been preached in the name of jesus and yet there has been people who have lived on the earth even before that and everybody the bible says the gates the the 12 gates had the names of the 12 tribes of israel so it says these these guys who trusted in the god of this israel who ever trusted in one and joined with one of the tribes do you know that in the old testament there were so many foreigners who would come and live among the israelites because they had an experience they had an encounter and they would want to serve the god of israel and they would just live among the israelites and they would go to crazy extent to make sure that they are now counted among the israelites and it says after a certain number of generations they were even allowed to get into the presence of god something that was a right only to the israelis only to the jewish people even foreigners that trusted in the god of this israel they were allowed into the presence of god after a certain level of generations and certain level of loyalty so what i'm trying to say is there are so many people that have access to this salvation that are through the jewish line those who trusted in israel and his 12 children you know those who came under the covering of this 12 children they were allowed access into this kingdom of god they were allowed access to the church you know and jesus went and preached the gospel to them in in the uh, in the in the hell and and made sure that each and everybody that would trust in him 
will rise up with him into heavenly places and so the gospel you should understand there is only one way to heaven and that is through jesus there is no doubt about it and yet god has given the mandate of preaching the gospel to two groups of people one is the jews that is the 12 tribes of israel and the second is the 12 apostles okay now these 12 apostles they were also jews technically speaking but they were disciples of jesus okay now they were not sons of israel but they were sons of jesus they were spiritual children to jesus now we we have studied these things these principles plenty of times you know our father has taught us this from first peter chapter 2 and verse 5 how you and i we are living stones that god is building into his spiritual temple you know and and our father he has taught us multiple times how we are built one stone next to the other and we we go all the way to the cornerstone who is jesus himself you know jesus had his 12 disciples and these 12 disciples they made disciples they raised spiritual sons and daughters and that went on and on and on and that is how you and i we are part of the kingdom of god today and when we get to heaven we are not going to be uh, just kicking off all of our spiritual lineage and having direct access to Jesus yes we will have direct access to Jesus in heaven the way that we have right now and even better even more and yet there will still be the names of the apostles in heaven there will still be those 12 tribes of Israel that will be engraved on the gates of this new Jerusalem because there's these are the only two ways in which you can be part uh, and parcel of what the lamb has to offer you see there's nobody absolutely nobody who will be outside of these two coverings you will either be covered by one of the 12 tribes of israel or you will be covered by one of the 12 see each of us we have a spiritual lineage that we need to honor here on earth you like it or not you need to be part of a family of god you need to be part of a spiritual perspective and and when you understand that you know that even when you get to heaven there also this still exists there also it says that the foundations will have the name the walls of that that city the walls will be built on foundations which will have the names of one of the 12 apostles of the lamb so a question would be asked of us where do you belong which apostle do you come under what is your spiritual lineage i understand you trusted in the blood of the lamb but tell me are you here because of one of the tribes of israel or are you here because of one of the apostles of the lamb there is there is nobody who is going to be outside of these two i've had so many people who arrogantly think that i don't need no earthly leader i don't need a pastor i don't need a church i have jesus i have direct access to jesus i don't need anybody or anything else now to each let it be according to their revelation but i'm just teaching you what is in god's word i'm showing you what you see in heaven in the new jerusalem what you see in the church that that apostle john is seeing this is not just a church this is the bride the wife of the lamb the wife of the lamb it consists of people that are either from the family of israel or they are from the family of the 12 apostles of Jesus let me read on i'll explain this to you further it says in verse 15 the angel who talked to me he held in his hand a gold measuring stick to measure the city its gates and its walls 
when he measured it he found that it was a square as wide as it was long and in fact its length and width and height were each a uh, 1400 miles then he measured the walls and found them to be 216 feet thick this is according to the human standards that are used by the angel now this is precious this is really really precious i i hope that you will catch this my dear friend now this is not talking about the the actual physical measurements please understand this is a spirit world we are in and we are receiving a spiritual revelation uh, we have to discern it spiritually and we have to receive its perspective from a spiritual uh, perspective okay now what you see is a cube because its height its length its width everything was equal it was same what you see is a cube and it says that this cube uh, uh, of a structure is how this new jerusalem looked like now when you think of a cube what is it that you would normally connect it to in the bible i don't know if you're aware of this fact but in the old testament when god gave them the instructions on how to build the tabernacle okay in the old testament okay the tabernacle had to be built in a certain manner and when they did build the tabernacle when they did make the tabernacle the most holy place had to be in the shape of a cube the height would be 20 cubits the width would be 20 cub- cubits the length also will be 20 cubits okay the most holy place see this was the place that nobody had access to except the high priest this was the place of intimacy this was the place that was the most glorious in the sanctuary and this place was in the shape of a cube and when we come down to the book of, book of hebrews we will understand that everything that we made here on earth is a symbol of the tabernacle that is already in heaven okay we saw that whatever moses made here on earth whatever his people his uh, uh, you know the people that made it skillfully according to his instructions whatever they made they made it representing a tabernacle which was already in heaven which means that when they when they made a cube structure here on earth for the most holy place they were doing it representing something of a cube structure which was already in the heavenly realm in the spirit realm and now here we see the cube coming out of heaven now this is this is what is interesting my dear friend see in the tabernacle there was a most holy place there was a holy place and there was an outer courtyard but in the new jerusalem <laughs> there is no outer courtyard there's going to be no holy place it's only the most holy place and that is why that is why when apostle john when he saw this he said i saw the holy city jerusalem like a cube in the same uh, proportions the proportions are same although the dimensions are not the same because see what we made here on earth is just a tiny representation of what they saw in the spirit realm in the heavenly tabernacle so the proportions may not be the same but the dimensions may not be the exact same but it was in proportion this was a cube and so was this uh, new jerusalem in heaven and so you see that the church this this wife of the lamb this bride of jesus that is shining so brightly which is sparkling like a jasper and it is as clear as crystal this church which has people belonging from the tribe of or the family of israel and the 
twelve uh, apostles and their spiritual children, their lineages. You would see that this 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 church is the most holy place. It is the most holy place in heaven. I hope that you catch this revelation. I hope that you understand what I'm trying to teach you this morning that the church will become the dwelling place of God. The church is the place where the glorious presence of God, just like the Shekinah presence of God, lived in the most holy place and the high priest was allowed to have a tiny glimpse of it once a year when he would go to place the blood upon the mercy seat. You and I, we will forever be living in that most holy place because that is what the church is supposed to be. Now, do you understand why there is so much of emphasis on consecration uh, to every one of us who are part of the church, who is part of the body of Christ? Why would Paul emphasize it again and again saying, guys, don't you know that you're members of the body of Christ? You're, you're parts of God's body, that you cannot do what everybody else does and you cannot think and watch and live how everybody else does because you are now a member of God's body. You are a temple of the Holy Spirit. Don't you know that God's spirit now lives in you? He was in fact preparing us for this eternal dwelling place. For eternity, you and I, we will become a hosting ground for God's presence. That is, that is going to be our home. We are going to be hosting God's presence. So, so if you're asking me if there is going to be a literal cube coming down from heaven, in all possibility, yes. Because God is a God of uh, glorious structures. And I, I do believe that there could be a physical cube coming down from heaven. And at the same time, I do believe that it is representing something much more than a physical structure of a city or a building. It is talking about the spiritual importance of this cube. The fact that you and I, we will be in the most holy place, in the holy of holies, experiencing encounters with God day after day, season after season. I'll read on. It says the wall was made of jasper and the city was pure gold and as clear as glass. See, if you read the uh, how God ordained the tabernacle to be made, everything in the most holy place had to be made out of gold. It had to be plated with gold. It couldn't it couldn't have any other material. It had to, had to, had to represent the divine gold. And, and the Bible says, so was it in this city. It says the wall was made of jasper and the city was made of pure gold as clear as glass. I can't even imagine how can a gold be as clear as glass that it will be actually see-through. It has to attain such level of perfection and such level of purity for this gold to be see-through, it to be as clear as glass. It says that the wall of the city was built on foundation stones. You remember that the foundation stones were the names of the twelve apostles. See, Paul spoke about this, although... Paul was seeing the same revelations from a different realm and he had a lot of understanding on this topic. Peter had understanding on this. That's why he said, you and I, we are being built into a spiritual house. We are the living stones of this particular house. And he explained that in 1 Peter chapter 2. And when Paul, he would write about this in Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 20 and he will say this, he says, hey, Together we are his house and we are built on the foundation of the apostles and the prophets and the cornerstone is Christ Jesus himself. What is Paul saying? That 
the teachings of the apostles and the prophets and the these these words the teachings and the and the lifestyles and their leadership that becomes the foundation that is not everything see it has to connect all the way to jesus who is the cornerstone but the foundation is what the apostles and the prophets are bringing and the bible says that this foundation it is like precious stones see what you and i we may not really value when we read uh, you know paul's experiences when we receive a word from our father week after week we we may think that it's only just uh, you know good teaching or a great revelation thank god for this what you don't understand it is is that it is so precious that it is laying the foundation for our eternal inheritance let me read this for you it says the wall of the city was built on foundation stones that are inlaid with 12 precious stones the first was jasper the second was sapphire the third was agate the fourth emerald the fifth was onyx the sixth was carnelian the seventh was chrysolite the eighth was beryl the ninth was topaz the tenth was chrysoprase the eleventh was jacinth and the twelfth was amethyst each of these stones represents definitely it represents one of the apostles because their names will be written on them and it also represents the revelation the the foundational revelation on which that part of the city is being built upon and i believe that uh, you and i we are so so blessed to have such amazing uh, revelations every week now you should understand everything that i have although Uh, i may have a different style and a different way of teaching and talking it is something that i have inherited from my father in the spirit okay he must not have sat with me and taught me okay this is how you should teach and this is how you should say he must not have given all the practical details all the time and yet whatever content comes from the spirit is something that i have received as an inheritance from my spiritual father and that's the same for him he has whatever my father is teaching there are so many things and every everything that he releases on to us week after week it's th- things that has come as an inheritance from his spiritual father who has received from his spiritual father and this connects all the way back to the apostles who represent one of these precious stones so when my father brings a word week after week when my father brings a revelation i know that it is no ordinary thing what i'm getting is an emerald or a amethyst or a beryl or a chrysolite this is a precious precious stone that is coming to me i better value it i better celebrate it because according to my revelation and my honor my, to that word that is coming to me according to that my foundation is being built up because that's what apostle paul said in ephesians 3:20 he said we are his house built on the foundation of the apostles and the prophets and the cornerstone is Christ Jesus himself so no changing the cornerstone Jesus remains the cornerstone and yet he will use these apostles and prophets who will bring teachings to us revelations to us precious stones to us week after week after week let me connect this to what our father taught us in this last season where he mentioned hey don't throw the pearls before the pigs or don't throw the precious stones in front of the swine it requires somebody with with a a desire and a pursuit uh, who is going to value this pearl who is going to really uh, you know uh, like hold this up and use it and apply it and get fruits out of it 
God will give those pearls only to those that are willing to work hard and willing to exercise it and willing to take to the next level. I pray that you and I, we will receive these pearls, these precious stones every week. It is coming, but it will be revealed to us only if we value what is coming only if you value the person that is carrying it only if you value the principles and the protocols that god has already established for us to receive this particular word that is coming to us week after week after week it says that the 12 gates were made of pearls pearls okay each gate was made of a pearl now we understand what is a pearl you know all of this connects to what dad has been teaching us in this season and and we understand what is a pearl we are not just talking about a physical architectural uh, you know thing we are talking about a spiritual revelation let me explain this it says the 12 gates were made of pearls each gate from a single pearl now in the natural that doesn't sound possible how can a pearl uh, be ever so big that it can make up for a gate of the city that is so massive how can a pearl that is why i'm telling you this is not talking about a physical uh, a physical gate alone or a physical pearl alone we are talking about things in the spiritual realm those whose eyes are open let them see it those whose ears are open let them hear what i'm saying in the spirit it says that these pearls one revelation one revelation one revelation can become the door or the gate for this entire city one revelation one pearl that's all that it takes one revelation one mystery that opens up to you can become a whole stream of revelations and a whole stream of things that you can receive from god one pearl one single pearl you know one gate doesn't require like thousands of pearls it just requires one pearl you know when jesus asked peter who do you who do you think i am who do you say i am peter replied saying uh, i believe that you are christ the son of the living god and jesus immediately replied back to peter saying peter you have no idea where that came from flesh and blood did not give that to you this is precious this is a pearl this is a stone this is a big big rock that you have received from my father in heaven and upon this rock i will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it upon this rock upon this particular pearl that you've just spoken that you've just released what peter didn't understand in its fullest extent at that point was that a big stone fell on him from heaven because jesus said flesh and blood did not give this to you it came from my father in heaven so so when peter recognized who his master was that became a pearl for him that became an open door that became a foundational thing on which his entire future his career his ministry his life the the, the whole church planting movement can be based upon and i hope i hope that some of us will catch that revelation in the spirit you need to know who your spiritual father is you need to know who is your leader you need to have a revelation of who they are and as you have a revelation you will be connected to Christ Jesus who is the cornerstone and one single pearl that will be given to you that's enough that one pearl 
is enough for you to bring thousands of people because that becomes the gate right now that one pearl is enough for you to bring thousands of people into this church into this kingdom into this new jerusalem so that you can invite them from the north and the south and the east and the west to be part of this new kingdom of god into this church that you and i will forever be hosting god's presence in the holy of holies the tabernacle of heaven the the most holy place of heaven we can have be, you and i we can be the gates we can be the pearls we can we can exercise the the grace that is given to us so that we can become the doors so you should understand that once the whole eternity happens and once god judges there's going to be nobody who will have access into this church after that right because everybody that doesn't have uh, their names in the lamb's book of life they have already been thrown into the lake of fire then what is this gates representing it is representing you and i who can still bring people into this church with one pearl with one revelation with one access one key point one submission one place that you and i will be rooted in that place can be a place where we can become the access points for thousands of people to experience the same grace that you and i have access to i really hope that you're understanding what i'm saying in the spirit let's move on verse 22 it says i uh, I think I missed verse 21 it says the 12 gates were made of pearls each gate from a single pearl and the main street was pure gold this is the part that I missed the main street was pure gold as clear as glass so when you enter in from this single pearl it is the main street it was made of pure gold and it was as clear as glass so the whole city was made of pure gold and the main street was also made of pure gold verse 22 read this out okay i saw no temple in the city for the lord god almighty and the lamb are its temple there was no need for a temple in this place because god was living in there and this city in itself became a temple because god's now living in there the it says for the lord god almighty and the lamb are its temple because they are there that is where people run to the presence of god the presence of jesus it's there available for them and it says and the city had no need of sun or moon for the glory of god who is in this house already who is in this church already it illuminates the city and the lamb is its light so two things the glory of god it illuminates the city and the lamb is its light so both is actively giving us everything that we need in this city so uh, there is a glory glorious light and there is a lamb who is the light so two different entities two different light sources you see here one is the glory of god the father and second the lamb who is the light of the city verse 24 it says the nations will walk in its light and kings of the world will enter the city in all their glory its gates will never be closed at the end of day because there is no night there and all the nations will bring their glory and honor into the city nothing evil will be allowed to enter nor anyone who practices shameful idolatry and dishonesty but those whose names are written in the lamb's book of life so he's finishing with talking about the eligibility of being part of this city he says one your name has to be in the lamb's book of life that is a must and second they they should be people who uh, don't practice idolatry 
do you know that there are Christians who still worship idols you know we may be following Jesus and still have other sins other people other things that we worship in fact Jesus said you cannot serve two masters you cannot serve God and Mammon Mammon when he was saying Mammon he was referring to money and he's saying hey you cannot be doing this you cannot serve two masters because this is dangerous it says those who practice idolatry and those who are dishonest meaning those who are not careful with the words they speak they are not loved into this place it says nothing evil will be allowed to enter so this is an invitation for us not to condemn anybody but it's an invitation for us to inspect our own hearts and our lives to see if there is any evil thing in us anything that looks like evil anything that is uh, resembling idolatry anything that is dishonest about us we have to disconnect from that today because we are going into a city where none of this is allowed let me just finish with this it says that the nations will walk in its light nations of the earth will walk in the light of the church the church will shine with the glory of god and the lamb will its will be its light and it says the kings of the world will enter the city in all their glory this is the point at which i want to stop the kings of the world will enter the city in all their glory can i connect this back to what dad has been teaching us saying it's the glory of god to conceal a matter and yet it is the glory of kings to uncover it to search it out to bring it out and it says that these kings they will enter the city in all of their glory so here on earth you and i who are kings according to proverbs who are unearthing these mysteries unearthing these revelations that god is giving us it is all of this glory that you accumulate here on earth because every time you unearth every time you you go deeper and you are able to tap into a revelation tap into a mystery your glory it shines brighter and it says that the kings of this world they will walk into that city they will enter the city in all of their glory so when you get to this kingdom of god when you are in this city what will show is not how many instagram followers you have what will show is not how much money there is in your bank account what will show is not how many graduation degrees you have accumulated what will show is not how much ministry you have done what will show is how much glory is there upon your life and it is the glory of god to conceal a thing and yet it is the glory of the kings to unearth it to bring it out i pray that you and i will be part of this uh, this uh, marching of kings that are going to come into this city in all of their glory that in this season we will stay rooted as jesus lovers because when we stay rooted as jesus lovers everything that we need every revelation that we need every perspective that we need every understanding that we need it will come to us from god it will come to us it will come to us if we are just going to be intentional to not move until that revelation comes until that word comes to us then that word will surely come that revelation will surely be our portion i pray and i hope that today's word was encouraging to you may the lord cause this word to catch fire in your spirit let's pray together father we thank you for you have chosen us to be the bride of the lamb to be the wife of the lamb today we've just had a vision had an encounter we've just seen a picture of this wife of the lamb and and she looks so beautiful because there is so much of glory upon her 
there is so much of grace upon her there is so much of preciousness because she looks like a jasper she looks as clear as crystal it's made of gold and 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 god your word says that that there is no temple there because the father and the son they live in this place this place is is like the tabernacle the cubic tabernacle where you lived in in the wilderness with Moses and Joshua and the Israelites lord we are so looking forward to living with you for all eternity we pray that here on the earth we will be like those diligent kings that are going to unearth everything that is hidden everything that is that is lost everything that has been kept away from us that we will be diligent in our pursuit of those treasures those pearls god we love you we surrender ourselves to you and we yield this word we yield to this word so that you can do something new and precious in our spirit and we thank you lord one more time for the spiritual lineage that we have all the way to the cornerstone all the way one stone connecting to the other to the next connecting all the way to the our cornerstone jesus we thank you for our spiritual father we thank you for our spiritual mother we thank you for the efforts they put to bring these precious stones to us week after week so that we can be built and we can be rebuilt and we can be strengthened and we can become partakers of this heavenly glory oh god we are so so thankful for such an amazing covering over our lives we yield ourselves to you we pray that you will make us mold us changes may there be nothing evil that will be found in us thank you for writing our names in the lamb's book of life we give you alone all the praise in jesus mighty name we pray amen amen thank you my dear friends it was such a pleasure to be with all of you one more time uh continue to let us know what uh the lord is doing in your life in the comment section we love hearing from you each week may the lord take us from glory to glory i look forward to receiving from my father this weekend i hope you are excited for the same too do not miss the opportunity don't let anybody steal that time don't let anything else distract you keep that time separated out and come with preparation come with a consecrated spirit and heart and according to our preparation we will receive from the heart of god god bless you have a blessed week ahead